Hey guys, Dr. Mike Hansen here and welcome to another video. Decided to do a little something different today. Today I'm with Rachel from Monument Health. She's a clinical dietitian and she knows a ton about nutrition and of course, lifestyle medicine. And as you know from my other videos, lifestyle medicine prevention is 80%. We're preventing things like diabetes, that type two diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity. You wanna get insulin levels down and the best way to do that is by eating the proper foods. That's real food, whole food that's unprocessed. Yeah, so I work in the lifestyle medicine department. So it's mostly just meeting patients where they're at by making sustainable lifestyle ch changes and choices in their life. Everyone has different goals. So sometimes people just wanna get off medications. Sometimes people want weight management. We just meet them where they're at and go from there, essentially. So today we're going to be making stir fry and you're kind of my student today, right? I know absolutely nothing about cooking and that's why I have her here today to show me how to cook some stir fry. Right. So we got kind of, I will preface it by saying that this isn't a traditional stir fry recipe, but the reason I chose a stir fry is because it's so customizable for a lot of people. You can throw in whatever veggies you like and kind of tailor it to your specific wants. So we've got our sauce portion slightly put together here. It's got about a quarter cup of olive oil in here. Um, I usually opt for olive oil, but you can use avocado oil or canola oil. This is more heart healthy. So I usually tell my patients to use olive oil. And then we have about three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Obviously, if you're watching your sodium intake, which is super important for healthy living, then low sodium is the way to go. You can actually keep that blood pressure down. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so, and also if you have a gluten allergy or you celiac disease, then coconut aminos is a good option to use as a substitute for soy sauce as well. And then we have honey, which I know Mike isn't a huge fan of sugars in most foods, but we were just using a couple of teaspoons just to add for a little bit of sweetness to the sauce. And this is actually local honey. There are some studies out there that recommend local honey for helping with allergies if you live in a specific region and use the honey made in that region. But we have that on hand as well today. So I'm actually gonna have Mike add in our lime portion of this. So all you have all right. to do is squeeze in the juice. I think I can handle that. Half all of right. the lime. All right. <laughs> Pretty intense, I know. The whole thing? Yep, okay. just squeeze it out. All right. There you go. So we're gonna be using ginger and garlic in here. Ginger and garlic are two aromatics that we're gonna use in the sauce and it's really gonna give the, the dish a lot of flavor essentially without having to use salt or any of those other things. So okay. I personally use garlic in just about everything because I don't think you can really go wrong with garlic. And it's actually got an oily substance called allicin in garlic. So whenever you're chopping up fresh garlic, you might notice that it's kind of waxy and oily on your fingers. That's what that compound is. And it's really good for your immune system and just anti-inflammatory compound. Cool. And then you can just kind of chop it up if you want, like mince it. Okay, so I just like. Yep, perfect. Just be careful your fingers there. Who needs fingers? <laughs> and our sauce should be pretty much made at this point. So we have bok choy over here, which is just a Chinese cabbage. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the bell pepper. I'm not a professional chef by any means, but I feel like the easiest way for me to cut bell peppers is just kind of cut down the side here. And that way you kind of avoid getting that middle part with all the seeds in it. So what are the, uh, the healthiest you know, parts of the bok choy? I would say probably, well, all of it's gonna offer some sort of- So like fiber. Fiber, you're gonna get some vitamins and minerals. This probably has a lot of potassium in it. It's gonna have vitamin K because it's a nice dark green. So probably vitamin A as well. Similar properties to spinach or kale, kind of all in that same family essentially. And then with the red bell pepper, it's got a lot of vitamin C. It's actually one of the highest foods in vitamin C. So yeah. nice. And the nice thing about bell peppers is you can just buy them in different colors and it just adds color to your dish. I'm always telling patients to eat the rainbow, not Skittles, but eat the rainbow of all the fruits and vegetables. Just cut it kind of down the middle like this from the stem to the root, kind of. Peel it. I kind of like to go in and make cuts at this angle. We're gonna end up dicing this, so okay. it's gonna be kind of a finer dice, like this. Yeah. And just be careful of your hands. Yeah, it looks dangerous. 
don't hurt yourself doing this. So then we're gonna go kind of lengthwise then like just making cuts. Don't cut all the way down to the root, but just right about here, just so it doesn't completely fall apart on this right now. Gotcha. And then the last step is just to dice it. This is actually kind of satisfying. Yeah, I know it's kind of weirdly satisfying <laughs> in a sense. You're not crying or anything. I'm actually not, pretty impressed. Not yet. Look at <laughs> okay, we can add the onion to the bowl with all the veggies now. So that should be all set. Okay. So our last thing is the broccoli. This is gonna give us a lot of fiber and bulk to our dish, which I really like. We can just kind of cut it like this. So I think our next step is just to cook all the veggies over here in our wok. Okay. So we can just heat this up on okay. medium heat. And then I'll just have you put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in the wok. Okay. And then we can let that heat up. This is one tablespoon? Correct. Okay. That should be enough to get all our veggies pretty sauteed up. Okay. A lot of the veggies that we kind of have put together here offer a lot of different health benefits. One of the biggest ones is fiber, but obviously gonna be adding also a bit of carbs to our meal um, and also just different vitamins and minerals. Like I mentioned earlier with the bok choy, there's gonna be a lot of vitamin A, vitamin K in those darker greens, potassium. So if you're an athlete and you kind of need help replacing potassium, those are good options as well. And the thing with stir fry is you can just kind of make a base of like onions and peppers and then go from there if you want broccoli or you can add carrots. Um, peas are a good option, snap peas, for example. So they all just offer different kind of textures as well. So that's why I kind of just chose a different assortment for today's recipe. So I'm just gonna add everything in. There you go, perfect. It would have been the same if I didn't do it. <laughs> you have to do that just to test it out. So you can just kind of start mixing things around a little bit. Make sure it all gets kind of cooked evenly, essentially. Are there any oils that you recommend not using that are unhealthier compared to say, you know, olive oil, avocado oil? I would say coconut oil is one that I usually don't recommend because it is so high in saturated fatty acids. Coconut oil was kind of a big trend, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, and everyone was buying it, but it really isn't quite as healthy as it's made out to be essentially. So I always recommend olive oil or canola oil over that. And how long would you say that this cooks for? That would be about, four minutes, four to five minutes. Okay. Until it starts to, you'll see the broccoli especially kind of start to soften up. You don't want that to be too hard. So we'll probably give it a solid four minutes. Would you agree with this statement that as long as you're cooking whole food, unprocessed food, for the most part, it's hard to go wrong with that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. So like for a lot of people, they would maybe crave a Chinese takeout and this would be a good alternative from going out and getting that takeout is just making something at home. And that's gonna help, you know, with all sorts of, you know, chronic diseases that stem from processed food. Yeah. Uh, whether that be like we talked about high blood pressure, you know, type two diabetes, heart disease, even fatty liver disease, mm -hmm. and you know, some forms of dementia where it's related to atherosclerosis. And so all those things that are, you know, these chronic diseases, it's, it really comes down to, as far as prevention, eating whole foods, unprocessed foods. Right. So I think while you're finishing up on that, I'm just gonna get started on cutting the chicken into bite-sized pieces. And another th nice thing about stir fries is you can use canned or frozen veggies. Just be aware of the sodium content, but if you don't have these sort of things in season in your state or your region where you live, then you can opt for those frozen options as well. And then of course, take advantage of your farmer's market and those local products where they are available at that time in season. So I'll just have you actually dump all that in here. All right. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So you can just add in a couple more tablespoons of olive oil. And we're gonna kind of cook these just until they're pretty much brown and almost ready to go. And then we'll end up adding our veggies back in and then we'll just kind of mix everything again. And then we'll end up adding our sauce and it'll cook for just an additional couple minutes and it should be all tied together. Wow, then, which is very nice. cool. Um, another nice thing is we are using chicken, but you can definitely make this dish vegan or vegetarian. I'm also gonna be adding lentils into this dish just to kind of show that you can use a different protein source other than meat. 
I have canned lentils here, so that's a really good option if you're short on time and just don't have time to cook them ahead of preparing dinner. You could do it with other things too, like shrimp and... Shrimp. Um, obviously a lot of people offer beef or pork, but you could probably use different seafood, like salmon. Now Mediterranean diet, that's, you know, really, as far as meat is concerned, it's really <laughs> mostly seafood. Right. And not so much the other things like beef or mm -hmm. pork or, or those sort of things. Right. And you're going to be getting in those healthier fatty acids. And there's still a great amount of protein in seafood, so. So a couple of things on olive oil. One is a lot of people will talk about the boiling point of olive oil mm -hmm. and how it's it's boiling point, not the boiling point, but it's uh, smoke point? the smoke point. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. It's three, 350 degrees. Mm -hmm. So they, they say, well, I can't cook with it then because I'm going over 350 degrees. And the concern is that the higher above that smoke point you are, then some of that's gonna turn into trans fat. And that's the fat that you want least. I mean, you never want trans fat at all. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you're consuming things that are pro-inflammatory as opposed to anti-inflammatory, you know, you're gonna end up with more inflammation in the body mm -hmm. and that can affect, you know, arthritis, your joints not feeling well, right. feeling sluggish and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about lentils is they're not just a protein source, but they also do have those complex carbs that are gonna help with not raising our blood sugar levels so high. So like I said, if you're vegetarian or vegan, or even if you're not, lentils is always a good choice to use in dishes to just kind of give you the double whammy of protein and carbs. Huge fan of lentils. Yeah. Uh, tons of fiber, protein, mm -hmm. the complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. It's you can't top lentils. Nope. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna add in the lentils. You know, the health benefits that you're getting from canned lentils versus just right. lentils at all. I mean, definitely mm -hmm. the lentils are outweighing those concerns. But if you did, you know, go with um, the non-canned version, you know, where you buy them in a the plastic bag, mm -hmm. like, how would you soak them? Just like for a day or? You can soak them overnight. That usually works best. Okay. I think the minimum recommended time is around six to eight hours, essentially. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna add in our veggies now. The big Go moment. Ahead. So you think this will be enough to feed five people? I would say probably closer to four people. Okay. But definitely a good sized family meal here for the most part. Ready for the sauce? I think so. Okay. You just dump the whole thing? <laughs> yep, you can dump okay. the whole thing in there. Perfect. And you obviously don't have to have a wok or a super special equipment at home to do this. You could just do it with a frying pan. Obviously a larger frying pan is going to work best, but if all you have is a small one, that works too. And drink water as your drink for the meal. Exactly. Not soda <laughs> or diet soda. So a nice thing about a dish like this is that you can kind of get the whole family involved. You can get your kids to prep the vegetables or rinse them maybe chop the meat up, but you kind of get them involved in the process. And it just kind of gets them appreciating, not only just knowing how to use kitchen skills, but appreciating healthy eating, just like we did with Mike over here, my guinea pig, so. Yeah, and actually, you know, with the Mediterranean diet, it's not just the food that you're eating, it's actually the culture where, you know, people, they cook and they eat together. Right. That's, it's about, you know, eating healthy and being happy together. And mm -hmm. so that's definitely a part of it and you know get the kids involved you know have them help out and you know most importantly have them wash the dishes and if they don't they go to time out okay? <laughs> all righty perfect so we pulled in a person from our studio audience here this is shauna and she's our health coach in the lifestyle medicine department at monument health and she's going to be taste testing our concoction today of stir fries so right. Oh, I no pressure. No pressure. You don't have to tell me. You can be totally honest <laughs> on a scale of one to ten. Okay. That's good. You got a nod so far. Really so mm-hmm. I like it. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Good. 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 Very good. Good. A plus. It is tasty. Mm -hmm. It is good. Mm. You never eat vegetables because you hate them. Is that correct? Yeah. And do you still feel that way? Not after this. This is <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. I think it changed my mind. I only paid her a thousand dollars. Sponsored. <laughs> endorsed. 